I know we had a little chat on the phone the other day about Anthony Joshua. Um, I haven't spoke to you since then. No. What did you make of his performance against Vladimir Klitschko? Well, well. Do you know what? In one way, I've got to first take my hat off to, to Anthony Joshua because in my eyes, he's a novice. And for a novice to come along in a short space of time and win the Olympic title and do so well as an amateur, unbelievable. For that to happen and then turn pro and then within a very short space of time, be picked the right fights and go through and win a world title and then eventually fight Klitschko. It just seemed quite comical and funny to me the way that he did get dropped in that fight and got hurt early, Joshua. But all of a sudden, I couldn't see why a former heavyweight champion of the world for reigning for 10 years that finishes guys off and takes them out hardly throws a punch, or when he does throw a punch, throw nothing of any substance. Why he didn't follow up when, when Anthony Joshua, no disrespect, nothing taken away from him, but him not basically being able to hold his arms up, or if he didn't hold his arms up, he weren't throwing much and there weren't much of a defense there. And we all know what happens when big guys like that get hit. But I rate Joshua for, for sticking in there, but was he meant to be stuck in there? I don't know. Something looked a little bit dodgy to me. Like I say, I don't want to. I don't want to say anything, anything wrong towards Anthony and his success because it's amazing. He's got a success story and a half, and God willing, he he remains successful and he remains to be our champion, and he also remains to be the ambassador of boxing in the UK and in the world at the minute. Let's get it right. Now it's just finally the fight that we do want to see for next year is Tyson Fury against Anthony Joshua, surely. Is that a fight you want to see? Well, do you know what? After everything that we've always thought about Mr. Mr. Fury, you know, you've got to give it that gypsy boy. You've got to give it the king of the gypsies. Because after everything that he said, after everything that happened throughout his career, I mean, even punching an uppercut and hitting, nearly knocking himself out, he still went past that part of his career and still went abroad and still beat a champion like Klitschko. You can never take once a world champion, always a world champion. And I'll tell you what, I would love to see that fight against Anthony Joshua because I believe that's a hard fight for Joshua because he's got some kind of movement Fury. He's got some kind of funky twitch going on in the fight with, <laughs> with Klitschko. But listen, he did something right in the Klitschko fight and that's what made him become one of the first or the first heavyweight champion of the world from a gypsy descent. And you know what, I've always, always rated them gypsies. I'm gonna be honest, I like them. You know, they get on with me, they love fighting, they, look, they, they support me. And all I can say is, you know, long live. Long live Gypsy King and all the gypsies because that's what they do, they wanna fight. And we've got a lot of them in Surrey. We've got a lot of them, they wanna fight. And that's what I love about them. So, and, and very comical, they're very comical. So <laughs> listen, it's, the future's bright. The future's are in jail. I gotta go. Please. Definitely. Listen, we'll catch you up next week. Brooke Spence. Yes, we're out. definitely. Oh, you're always a massive it, fan of Eiffel oh, TV, aren't you? You're always, a always fan, a classic. You? Always a classic with you, KC. Always a classic because I film London. I'm coming. Peace. Thank you very much. <laughs>